You're listening to the Weekly Partial Podcast with Ari Goldwag, recorded with Hashem's never-ending assistance in Ramah B'Shem Ash Israel 5782-2021. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Vayetze, and the Torah describes the flight of Yaakov Avinu of Jacob from his homeland, from his family, in the land of Israel, running away to the land of Haran in order to find his wives who would be the foundation of the Jewish people. I'd like to read to you the Medrash, the beginning of our Parsha, which has a very powerful message, two, two pieces. The verse tells us that he left from Be'er Sheva, from, from the place where he lived, and he went towards Haran, which was where he would find his wives. Rav Pinchas B'Shem Rav Huna Bar Papa Posach. Rav Pinchas said in the name of Rav Huna, he opened up this matter, the idea, what is the concept of Yaakov leaving, leaving Be'er Sheva, and how did he go in? How did he go into that journey? What was his sense? What was his feeling at the time? So he brings a verse in Mishle, in Proverbs chapter chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. The verse says, Oz telech levetach darkecha, then you shall go with with confidence on your way. The goymer, in tishkav leitivchad, if you shall sleep, you will not be afraid. Oz telech levetach ze Yaakov, who is going with confidence on his way? It's a reference to Jacob. Dechseva yitzay Yaakov, as the verse says, and Yaakov went. In tishkav leitivchad. When you will sleep, you will not be afraid. You won't be afraid of Esav, you won't be afraid of Lavan. And you shall sleep, and you will have a, a sweet sleep. As the verse says, he slept in that place. Now there's different gears here, which we'll get to in a moment, but just in the Pashup shot here, there's a sense of satisfaction, there's a sense of, of confidence, as we said, that allows a person to sleep well at night. Yaakov Avinu is running. Yaakov Avinu is in flight, running away from Esav, as, uh, as uh, the verse tells us, as the Medrash tells us. And despite the fact that he's afraid for his life, despite the fact that as our Chazal tells us, as, as we'll see soon, he was robbed of everything that he had at that time. He came empty-handed to Haran. Nevertheless, he slept well at night. He he didn't he wasn't afraid. He didn't feel a sense of fear. What gave him that sense? Why was he able to feel so confident? So the Radal says, and we're going to see that there's other reasons why, but the Radal says like this. Yaakov Avinu Jacob, why did he go on this flight? Why did he run away from home, so to speak, because his parents had sent him. He listened to his parents, and he went in order to find a wife. In other words, what was the reason that he had confidence? It was because he was listening to his parents, because he was following their directive. That allowed him to have confidence. Says the Radal, the idea is, since he listened to his parents, he listened to his mother and father, what they had instructed him, as a result of that, he didn't have to be afraid. There was nothing to be afraid of. He was protected, because he was fulfilling the command of his parents, he was fulfilling the mitzvah of kibbut of aim, of respecting one's parents. So in the first section of the Medrash, the reason that he could have confidence, the reason that he had bitachin, the reason that he could sleep well at night was because of the fact that he had nothing to be afraid of. Why? Because he knew he was doing what was right. And this is a very important thing. And we'll see more about what it means to have bitachon, what it means to have confidence and trust in Hashem, that things will work out well, that all that a person needs will be provided for. What enables a person to have that bitachon? So at one level, and this is actually a lower level, when a person is doing what's right, they can be assured that they are going to have success. Why? Because when you attach yourself to Hashem, when a person does what's right, 
So intrinsically, they are protected. But then there's another aspect of it, and this has to do not with so much what a person is doing in terms of doing what's right, because as is brought down, that uh, Pasuk says, Habatech b'shem chesed yisavivenu. And our Chazal tell us that a person who trusts in God, even a Russia, even a person who is wicked, Habatech b'shem, but he trusts in God, chesed yisavivenu. He's surrounded by kindness. So, bitachin, trusting God and, and receiving God's grace is not dependent on action. So on one hand here, we see that he did something right, and therefore, he was protected. But on another hand, we're going to see that it's not just that. Rishmuel Bar Nachman Posach. This is the next piece in the Medrash. Rishmuel Bar Nachman opened up this matter and he bra- brought the famous verses in Psalm chapter 121. Shir The verse says, A song of ascents, a song of looking up above. I will look up to the mountains from where does my, from where does my help come from. Says the Major Shadrasha, and he darshans that since the Pusik there later in the, the the verses there in that piece in in uh, Tehillim, it says Shomer Yisrael. It references the fact that God is the protector of Israel. Who's Israel? Yisrael is the name of Yaakov, you know, of Jacob. So this entire section of the of the of Tehillim is referring to Yaakov Avinu, says the Medrash. Esayna el ahoyrim says the Medrash, instead of reading Esayna el ahoyrim, I want to look back at the mountains, he says, let me look back at my parents. How did my parents, indeed, how were they able to find a spouse and get married? Malfonai el mabdonai, I need to look at what I was taught, to those who taught me, to those who shaped me, into the man I am today, into the person that's able to serve God. He looked back and he saw what had happened when it came to his father Yitzchak getting married. Eliezer was sent, the slave or the servant, excuse me, of Avram Avinu was sent to find a wife for Yitzchak. And he arrived there with a tremendous amount of wealth, with camels, with gold, silver, jewelry, etc. Eliezer, Bish- he says to himself, where, where am I going to find my Ezer? Ezri means my help. But as the Mephorshim say, Ezri can also refer to the Ezer Kenegdo. Chava, when she was created, Eve, on behalf of Adam Arishom, for Adam. So Hashem says, Esel Ezer Kenegdo, I will make a helpmate corresponding to him. So the word Ezri, Ezri, where will my help come from, can also mean. Where will my wife come from? The verse tells us that when Eliezer went to bring back a wife for Yitzchak to find Rivka, he brought with him ten camels, the gomer, etc., all the things that he brought. I don't have anything. I don't have any, any rings. I don't have any bracelets. I don't have anything to give. I don't have anything to to show the grandeur of my home. So, what, what, what can I do? And, of course, the obvious question which the Medrash addresses immediately is, why didn't he have anything? His parents sent him off. Why wouldn't they send him off with as much as possible in order to present himself as somebody who was, you know, eligible for marriage? Rabbi Hanina Amar Gedud Shilcha. Rabbi Hanina says that the reason that he had nothing, interestingly, not the typical answer that you would think. The reason that he had nothing is because he was sent with nothing, and as the Mefurshim explain, they didn't want. His parents knew that Esav was a money-hungry person, and that if they gave any kind of wealth to Yaakov to take with him, Esav would run after Yaakov and remove that wealth from him, steal the wealth from him. So, as a result of that, they gave him nothing. That's one pshat. Not the typical pshat that we hear. The other pshat sounds more familiar. Yeshua ben Levi Omar, Shilach Yimai, Elash Amar Esav and Atomi Menu. Yeshua ben Levi says that, indeed, his parents gave Yaakov much wealth in order to bring with him, in order to represent himself properly. However, Esav came and took it from him. 
We all perhaps know the famous Medrash that Eliphaz, the son of Esav, he was the one who came, and he was the one who took it from him. But in any event, he had nothing with him. He had nothing with him. He had no wealth. He had no. He didn't have anything to per, to present to his prospective brides, bride, or brides. Chazer ve'Omar, Mo Ana Moivit Sivrim in Bari Chas v'Shalom. He said to himself, Yaakov Avinu. He first was thinking the thoughts. Esayna Elaharim. He is thinking about Me'anyo ve'Yisvi. How am I going to get married? He thought about his parents and how his parents got married, and. And he had Chalisha Sadas. He was worried. How am I going to do this? How am I going to pull this off? But then he said to himself, What? Do I not have any faith in my Creator? Chas v'shalom. Heaven forbid. Less on a moivit sivrim and bori. Hashem. I cannot give up my faith in God. My faith, my help, is going to come from Hashem. The one who is meant for me is going to come. It doesn't matter if I have the proper, the regular way of getting a wife. As the verses continue, and it says, You do not need to worry. You don't need to, to worry that you might stumble. Because the one who protects you does not sleep. The one who protects you, Israel. The one who protects you, Jacob, Yaakov Avinu, is Hashem, the protector of Israel. Hashem Yishmarcha Mikol Ra. The verse says, Hashem will protect you from all evil. And Hashem is going to protect you from those wicked people who would like to cause some negative impact on you. Hashem says, you are going to be protected from the angel of death. You don't have to worry. Usually, when you go on the path, when you go on a long journey, it can be very dangerous, especially in those times. You know, they, were, they had to travel in an unprotected way. They travel along on the path. It could take weeks or months to get to wherever they needed to get to. And there were shayidim. There were thieves and robbers and people who would come and pillage and murder, etc. Don't worry, says God. You don't have to worry about the Malach Hamavis, the angel of death. And interesting, as the Mephoshim explained, you don't have to worry about the angel of death, not now and not ever. Because, as the Yitzhak says, in the future you're not going to die by the Malach by the angel of death, but rather, you're going to die by a Mises Nashika, a special kind of death where Hashem takes your soul, personally, as it were. Hashem Yishmur Tzitzcha Vecha Vayetzeyaka, the verse tells us that Hashem will protect you on your way out and on your way in. You need not worry. You need not worry at all. You know, I was thinking about this, and the question that, well, before that question, hold on. We'll get to that question shortly. But what do you see in this medrash? What do you see in this medrash is that in the first piece of the medrash, so we saw that why was he protected? And that's the first level of bitachon, of trusting in God. A person can have faith, not because they have faith per se, but because they're doing what's right. When a person does what's right, they have protection. They have automatic protection. He was following the, the will of his parents. He was listening to give it of aim. He automatically has protection. But then there's another level, which is a deeper level, which is applicable to anybody, even those who are wicked, even those who don't have proper uh, proper deeds. And that is just turning to Hashem and, and putting one's faith completely in God, recognizing that I don't have to worry. I don't have to worry. What do you mean? How am I going to find my wife? I don't have the money. I don't have the way to present myself properly. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. And so he says to himself, what am I doing? I'm thinking, how am I going to accomplish this? This is how my parents did it. I don't have the same means. No. I don't have to worry about it. Even that you see in the story of Yitzchak and Rivka, you see the incredible Ashkach HaPratis, incredible divine providence intervention on behalf of Yitzchak Avinu to find this woman, Rivka. I don't have to worry. Hashem is going to take care of me. Now, because he goes into the journey with that realization, with that recognition, with that consciousness, so the result is a similar result. We said he, he could sleep easy, right? He could sleep easy knowing he was doing what's right. But here he can sleep easy because Hashem doesn't sleep. Hashem doesn't sleep. Hashem is taking care of him constantly, even when he sleeps. And what is the schus? What is the merit that allows him to be able indeed to have that confidence? It's because he 
trust in Hashem. It's because he recognizes that there is a God. And he has taken care of me until now. He has protected me until now. And I have the blessings. I have the blessings of Yitzchak and the blessings of, of Avraham. I'm going to be the beginning of the Jewish people. Yaakov knew that. And as a result of that awareness, that consciousness, so he comes in and he has protection. When a person has bitachon, when you trust in God, you are automatically protected. This is what we see here. Okay, so one level is just doing what's right. The other level is just having faith in God. Putting one's faith completely on God and not thinking that I need to do everything. Check out my bitachon podcast. Just put out a new one. I haven't done it in a while. Bitachon podcast number 33. But that's the concept of bitachon, of true, deep bitachon. And he's protected from the people that he can't protect himself against. He can't protect himself from Esau, who wants to kill him. He can't protect himself from Lavan, who wants to destroy him and, and squeeze him for all that he's worth. And, of course, the, the main one that we can't protect ourselves from is the Malach HaMavis, from the Angel of Death. And here's where we come to that question that I wanted to ask. And that is, you know, Av- I'm sorry, Yitzchak, I'm sorry, Yaakov, <laughs> <laughs> Yaakov Avinu did not escape death. Okay, he had a Mises Nashika, a special kind of death, but he died. It's not like he didn't die. I, I was thinking that there's a deeper idea here when we say that Yaakov Avinu didn't die, and there's a concept of uh, Yaakov Avinu Lomes. There's a concept, Yaakov, that he represents the Jewish people, the children of Yaakov, B'nai Yaakov, B'nai Israel. We refer to ourselves as the children of Israel. The children of Israel come from Yaakov. Yaakov's name was Israel. Israel. When we say that Yaakov never died, we say that Yaakov, it wasn't, the, the Malach HaMovis couldn't have power over him. It's not just about Yaakov. Maisa Avis Melabonim. Whatever happened in their lives is indicative of what happens in the, in the lives of our nation. Of the nation called Israel, of the nation called Yaakov, of Jacob. So this, we could say perhaps, that when the measure speaks about the fact that Yaakov didn't have to worry about his oppressors, Esau and Lavan. Yaakov didn't have to worry about the Malach HaMaves. Yaakov was protected in every way, wherever he went. He was blessed, because that was who he was, because of his trust in God. This applies not just to Yaakov, but it applies to us. It applies to the children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, and all of the generations of Yaakov, of the people of Israel. We are also protected from, from our enemies. We are also protected from the Malach HaMavis. The Jewish people can never die. Netzach Yisrael Shaker, The eternity of Israel will never be falsified. It will, never, it will always be, there will always be a Jewish people. The children of Israel, the children of Yaakov, we have this blessing. But where does it come from? And this is, the main point. Where does it come from? Why are we promised that we will last forever? It comes from the fact that Yaakov Avinu, first of all, did what's right. Second of all, he trusted completely in Hashem. He placed his faith completely in God. He didn't think, how can I do things? How can I get this wife that I'm destined to get? What do I need to do to move things along? He stepped back and he said, Hashem can do everything. He doesn't need my help. The Jewish people today have this promise as well. We have this promise. When we do what's right, we have protection. When we have faith in God, we have protection. We can know. We can know because Yaakov Avinu had this. We can know that Yaakov, he had blessings throughout his life. He had special protection from God. Why? Because of his bitachon. Because of his good deeds. We too to the extent that we dedicate ourselves and are committed and are acting upon that commitment to do what's right, to do God's will, to learn the Torah, to fulfill its commandments, we can be assured that all good will come to us. And when we put our faith completely in Hashem, when we have full bitachin in God, sometimes we don't know how it's going to be. How are we going to, how's it going to work out? How will we have the livelihood we need? How will we find that shidduch? How will, how will it work out? How's it going to work out in the end? Look at what my parents did. They had a better job than me. Look at what, this is how they found the shidduch. I can't do that. It doesn't matter. All a person needs to do is have full faith in Hashem. So I want to bless you, and I ask you to bless me. Hashem should help us. That we should be able to indeed fulfill His commandments. And we should indeed be able to have 
full bitachon in Him. And in this way, Hashem should help us to fulfill our destinies. Call Mashallah to the Bain of the Torah, Hashem should fulfill all of our desires for good. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.